All right. Thank you for joining the Genesis DevCast for October. Uh, my name is Jim Crispino. I'm the Senior Director of Developer Evangelism here at Genesis which means I have a fancy title of I like to promote our APIs and our integration points to the world to let them know the power of uh, the Genesis Cloud Platform. And today I'm pleased to have Justin Ray with me. He's a team lead and lead software engineer for uh, R&D of Genesis Cloud, and he is going to cover the new interaction widget feature that has been long in coming and we're very excited to have. Uh, before we, before I turn it over to Justin, just a couple of logistics here. So um, to let you all know, we're, Justin's going to kind of give you the overview of this new interaction widget feature, and we'll do a demo. And at the end, we'll have about a 10-minute Q&A period. So if you have questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen to post a question. And We'll either try to answer that live during the presentation or at the end during the 10 minute session. And this tutorial is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our Genesis Community YouTube channel. The, the URL is easy to get to if you go to our developer center at developer.mypurecloud.com and go to the video section, you'll be able to get uh, a quick link to our YouTube channel so that you can go there, see our past, presentations and even subscribe to that channel so that you're aware of new presentations that you may might may not be able to attend in person. So with that, I will stop talking and I'll turn it over to Justin to cover the interaction widgets. All right, Justin. Thanks. Screen Thanks, Jim. And uh, and thank you all for attending. Uh, as Jim said, we're excited to to unveil this and see what you build and, and what kind of cool features you add to Genesis Cloud. So uh, without further ado, let's get going. Um, can everyone now see my screen? Or Jim, can you see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so yeah, this converse, or this, uh, this devcast is about uh, interaction widgets, uh, which is our newest way to add uh, contextual content to Genesis Cloud, you know, because we know Genesis Cloud is a platform and something that we uh, we encourage is building custom features atop it. And so we're really excited about this feature. Um, so in terms of an agenda today, we're gonna just go over what the interaction widgets are and how they work. Um, the two different types of interaction widgets that you might be interested in building, premium and ad hoc. Uh, we'll go over how you configure them, how you set them up, uh, and then we'll go over like an overview of how you would actually build one and all the features that are available and then fi finish it off with a demo that we actually have on, uh, on GitHub that you can pull in and try out today. So uh, let's get going. So uh, Interaction Widgets is an app. So if you're familiar with client apps, you know that we already have two embed spots in Genesis Cloud. Uh, we have the widget area, which shows up in our sidebar. You can see I have a bunch of demo apps in this screenshot. And we also have what we call the standalone space, which is you know, a larger, larger view. And so the widget app was for contextual bits that you might have a quick view or some sort of dashboard, whereas a standalone might be for more integrating a you know, back of the house quality or supervisory app that you wanna add. Um, and so our latest embed location is actually within the interaction flow itself, the agent view. So these are gonna be used to add contextual verticals uh, that help your agents do things better. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to just embed right alongside the content and you won't have to worry about what, what interaction is selected. Um, and really the name of the game is that it's contextual. It's still an app. Um, it's still an externally hosted iframe and that's important for security boundaries. Um, it still supports single sign-on via our Genesis Cloud authentication. So as you redirect through uh, the, the, line, the Genesis Cloud authentication mechanism with OAuth 2, you'll have access to all the Genesis Cloud APIs for the conversation data that you need to get. And then really where it matters is you being able to fetch your own custom data and append that and mer marry those two together to create a, you know, an integrated compelling experience. Um, and then you have access to our client apps SDK. So uh, it's basically the same SDK features plus few, a bit more that's contextual for interactions uh, and this really helps you make an, a really compelling integrated experience. You send toast messages, navigate, and hook into the app's lifecycle event. So when an, your app is starting, uh, when it's focused, blurred, and when it's torn down. And we'll get into all that. Um, 
uh, in some live demos. This is a dev cast, so we'll just get through the slides and then get on with the demo. Um, but as I, I pointed out, the important thing of with interaction widgets is that they're contextual, right? They are a given instance of your, your app. An iframe instance is bound to a single Genesis Cloud uh, interaction or conversation, depending on your nomenclature. Uh, and you do that by conveying the context via conversation ID using this PC conversation ID in the URL. Uh, it's interpolated at runtime. So we'll inject this, whatever the conversation ID is right into your URL. And so here I'm using it as a query string. You could use it as a path. You can use it as a hash for using hash-based routing, really wherever it makes sense for your routing structure of your app. But the important bit is that your instance is specific to a given conversation. So that, what that's, that's great for you is that we're gonna manage the entire life cycle of your app. We'll start it up, we'll tear it down. They're, they're lazy loaded. Um, and you don't have to worry about whether when it's switched and repainting your app and things. And then they're also cached uh, in the DOM. So, so as we create these instances, we'll allow up to 10 instances of, of interaction or of uh, interaction widgets to be spawned across different interactions and they're cached, right? So as soon as they're in the DOM, they're loaded, they're fast to restore. So if an agent is clicking around uh, amongst different apps, yours is gonna snap right back into place and they run in the background. So you can continue to listen to web sockets, either our real-time events or yours uh, to be able to fetch real-time data and then make actions on them. And as I said, you have full access to the whole public API of Genesis Cloud to you know, send response messages or to take actions on the conversation, uh, as well as your custom APIs that are afforded through your data and your actions. Uh, so as I mentioned, we do have a max of 10. We closely monitor our eviction strategy to see if we need to update that. It's a give and take of user performance. You know, our agents might be on low end machines and um, developer ergonomics and, you know, efficiencies and bits like that. So right now we're not seeing any evictions at interaction widgets. Um, I guess if, if this really takes off, when you all build cool things, maybe we'll start to see more evictions and we'll ratchet that number up or provide a dial for our, our more interaction widget heavy users to be able to have more running. Um, but suffice to say, if you're using the uh, interaction widget or the client apps SDK, you'll know when your apps are stood up or torn down and they'll just be reinstantiated when it comes when it comes time to reopen them. Um, and if you're in this dev this dev cast, you're probably in, in one of two categories. Uh, you're looking either to build an ad hoc or custom uh, interaction widget or a premium interaction widget. So our, our ad hoc widgets are going to be for you know in-house tools, offerings, some integration with your contact center, like it's a SaaS offering, um, any web-based resource you may, your agents may find useful. Um, just a note that uh, a lot of a lot of popular SaaS options, if they're free, uh, aren't going to allow you to embed into an iframe from an X-frame options header, right? So you can't just go embed Google. Of course, that's not really a compelling user experience anyway. But as an example, you can't embed Google or some of these big ones. You can embed Wikipedia, but again, not a compelling user user story. So just be wary of that if you're trying to embed a generic app that you're not paying for or that uh, is a big name that maybe they're not embedding unless you're, you have a, a partnership with them. Uh, ad hoc uh, and custom apps are controlled by groups at their access control model and they require Pure Cloud 2, just like regular embedded client apps. Uh, the, other, the other category uh, of people who might be on this call are people who are looking to build premium apps to, to actually sell in Genesis and on our App Foundry store. So yeah, these would be apps that are built by a partner slash vendor um, and we'll host them on Genesis Cloud's App Foundry for, and they're installable across our entire install base, right? So if you wanna be able to add a market vertical into our platform and get reach all of our customers, that is an avenue uh, that you might want to uh, try. Uh, the, these, these are access controlled by custom permissions, right? So we'll actually work with you to create products and permissions in our, in our system so that then you can control who has access to the, the apps and, and get paid for those. Um, we support free trials for premium apps and they're also billable on our paper. Uh, so there's more links and resources towards the end of this presentation, but if you're interested in that, uh, please contact Zach Hinkle, uh, and I will, I'll put his information down at the bottom, but that's where you'll want to go to get information on that. 
Um, so I think we can, at this point, we'll just start to go through some live demos as opposed to looking at slides all day. And it's a good, good chance for me to show you the configuration options of uh, these new interaction widgets. So uh, if you're in an admin section, so you can see I have lots of permissions. You may not have all of these, but the area that, that ad hoc uh, interactions show, interaction widgets show up is in the integration section. And we'll look at one that we have actually hosted out on uh, GitHub, this Toast Interaption example to show some of the config for it. Uh, I'll zoom in here a little bit. So you can see it's, it's very similar. If you've worked with apps before, uh, you can uh, look, you can configure a few aspects of the, the app. Uh, the number one bit will be the URL. And as we mentioned before, the important part of the URL is the PC environment. Let me try and get over here. Uh, PC environment, that is the Genesis Cloud region that you're connecting to. And we'll see that into your URL as well as the PC conversation ID. So this is what allows you as a developer to know which interaction or conversation uh, you're focused on. Uh, you have the same iframe sand sandbox options that you've always had uh, with client apps. So this allows access control for your iframes and allows us to keep Genesis Cloud secure and safe. So our iframes don't have full access to you know, the DOM being able to navigate to other iframes. So this is a security measure. Um, as I mentioned, group filtering is how you control access to an ad hoc app. And then these are the two new filtering options, queue filtering and communication type filtering. So this allows you to dictate where uh, the interaction widgets will show up. So here I've got two demo, two demo queues that this is set up for, and you can also filter them by media type. And they're listed here. So you can filter by chat, call, uh, WhatsApp, and web messaging is coming soon to these. So really you can configure, you can ask your, your users to configure these however you want to target which agents you want. So if you have, you know, uh, set, you have a sales queue and a support queue. You can have different interactions, interaction widgets for each of those. So it's pretty powerful. Um, I'll go through the advanced. There's no, there's no changes to advanced configuration in interaction widgets as opposed to uh, uh, regular apps. But uh, I'll just go through some of these settings just as a, you know, for completeness. Uh, you can specify the icons to use when when the app is loading, and you know, in, and they'll be shown in the tab. Uh, you can also configure translations for, you know, uh, different LangTag users and locale users. And then there's the lifecycle hooks, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, so with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and have a demo so we can see what we're talking about. Pictures worth a thousand words. So I'm going to use the developer tools uh, to, to populate a web chat. And I'm targeting this uh, interactions demo queue and we'll start a chat. So here I'd be the, the customer. chat and over here I'm playing the role of the agent and I'll go ahead and accept this chat go full screen and so now I'm in, in as an agent role and you can see I have my standard tabs that I would normally use as an agent to to uh, help in a customer deal with their their issues I can see their profile if they if you have external contacts and canned responses um, but the the new bits are these new icons which have shown in shown here and these are interactions this is your custom content appended to the interaction so if you go into this this toast interaction. This is again one that you can go out and get on our GitHub repo and just embed. This one's hosted on GitHub IO. You can just embed this today and you can start playing with this. Uh, and this, this is just a demo to kind of illustrate some of our SDK methods. So from your app, this is a, again an iframe. You can send a toast uh, through your the, our JavaScript SDK and you can see you can create a a compelling user interface experience, you know, by looking native within Genesis Cloud. You can also increase attention count, what we call the attention splat. So this is valuable if your if your app has been running and is backgrounded behind uh, and it's not currently focused. You can put an attention splat up to to tell your users that you would like them to. You have new data, so if you have a knowledge base and some some part of the conversation has triggered an article, you can then put this splat on and the user will know to click that you have information. And then you can also clear it. Uh, and so this usually is used hand in hand with this bootstrap. Well, this bootstrap example can show you the code. Uh, this lifecycle uh, example is showing how you can listen for blur focus events um, and, and also 
uh, when you're starting and stopping your life cycle events. So as you can see, this example is just throwing toasts whenever it's focused or blurred. So you can use that in combination with the uh, attention count to, to really pr to provide you know, some data and some different, different UX depending on whether you're focused or not. Um, and so those examples, as I mentioned, are out on our client app SDK repo. Again, the links will be at the end of this, this presentation, but these examples are here and they're pretty, they're pretty thorough. They, we have different interaction or different examples to show you about navigating to a user's profile, or you can navigate to the interaction details. Um, you can navigate to an external contact if you're doing sort of bits like that. Uh, and we'd also like your requests on other features that you want to add, have added to this SDK. So you can either reach out to myself, Zach Hinkle, or uh, you can add an issue in here in the GitHub repo and we'll talk to that. Um, so going back to the configuration. So now you've decided you want to build an interaction or an interaction widget and you want to create a premium app. When you do that, you'll be able to work with us to create your own custom branded view. Uh, and when you do install that interaction, your users will see a different perspective. You can have your own custom. Here's an example of a development client app that we have, a premium app. Uh, here's one of our partners, Emite. So they'll have your, you'll have your own custom branded icon. And then you can also tailor this configuration. Uh, so in, in the configuration, this, this uh, premium app happens to have all the same configuration switches, but you can you can set these and configure these so that your at your users don't have to install them and provide as much data. You can hard code your URL and they don't have to enter that. Uh, you can provide your sandbox options and, and bits like that, and even the advanced configuration, your lifecycle things. So this is how you really create it an easy to install uh, development flow. Uh, even even more so, you can really even create a whole install process. Some of our partners have created, and we have demos out again on developer pure cloud. Um, to go through and create an install wizard where you have an administration app that you'll set up and create your different kinds of interaction widgets for your different users. And then you could even select the queues and really have create a guided install process. Uh, so I really encourage you to go out and look at some of the, some of that information out on the, um, out on the developer center and the help. Um, so we are going to talk a little bit about creating these. Uh, let's go through some of these examples. Um, you know, now it's probably beyond the scope of this app to talk about all of these de all of these items in detail, but I kind of wanted to give you a framework for how you build an app that's going to be connecting to Genesis Cloud APIs. Um, and again, I'm going to encourage you to take a look at those GitHub examples. They've got data, but uh, basically the flows will follow as such. You'll want to create an OAuth 2 client um, in in your administration section to be able to to do your OAuth flow. Um, so that look, you'll go into integrations OAuth and you'll create a, you know, for instance, a blueprint. And we'll talk about, this is the demo I alluded to earlier that Jim and his team have built uh, that you can just pull the source and actually run a chat assistant blueprint right from here. But you'll wanna create an implicit grant, uh, create your, your redirect URLs here, I'm doing it for localhost and create an OAuth client to use. Uh, so I'll be, deleting this one, obviously, um, since the secret is out there. Uh, but yeah, once you get your OAuth2 client and you implement an OAuth flow, then you'll have access to being able to do the entire uh, Genesis Cloud API. And if you're doing this in JavaScript, I also highly recommend you use the, uh, the client app SDK and the uh, JavaScript SDK. So let me go out here and I'll show you. what those look like. So uh, if you go out to the developer, mypurecloud.com, this first article on authorization setup is very helpful. It goes through OAuth2 flows. Um, and then you can even look at uh, examples in even in JavaScript. Uh, here's a client credentials grant. Um, and you can look at the JavaScript code, how to get an access token. And so this is a great way to get started. Uh, it really just comes down to login implicit grant. Uh, let's see. Here's an example in our uh, GitHub examples, set the environment for the platform, and then you call an authenticate method, which, and then once you get that, you can just access the uh, platform client just like you normally do. So you have great integration with 
uh, the Genesis Cloud public API through JavaScript or whatever language you'd like to use. So that's how you can get access the the context, the query string parameters or path or whatever to get it, and then you can load the conversation details from the public API. You can also use our real time service and set up a WebSocket and subscribe to conversation changes to get data over time, uh, so that you can find out what's going on in the conversation. You can fetch the, the payload of the messages coming through. You can see if the conversation has been transferred. You can see what state the, the app is in. If it's in wrap up and you want to show a different kind of view, that's really the power of these interactions, interaction widgets is they're contextual. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll talk briefly on the lifecycle events too. Um, in the client apps SDK, you can go into, again, the dev center, and we've got all of the APIs we currently have here. Um, and for instance, the lifecycle API provides the most uh, useful ones for tracking lifecycle, not surprisingly. Uh, you want to opt into that advanced configuration. You want to set your hooks here so you can be notified if your app is focusing or, or bootstrapping, focus, blurred, and stop. So if you if you opt into these hooks, then you can add these listeners down here. And sorry, I should probably zoom in a bit. And you'll be able to track the state of your app. So you can add a, a focus listener to know whether you're focused or blurred. Um, and you just and you just work through this. Uh, and again, the that's out on GitHub, and we recently actually just converted this this API to TypeScript. So you should have great types type support if you're working through that, and you should be able to get get a hold of these docs a little bit easier than consuming them via the the developer uh, my cloud uh, resource. And and you can see here again are all of these these APIs you can access. Uh, the alerting API is where you can send toasts and set that attention count. Um, the External contacts API allows you to jump to an external contact, as we mentioned before. Maybe you're building something to integrate with our external contacts CRM system, um, or if you need to to jump to a user, you know, to get details of an agent, to, a fellow agent to transfer. Uh, those are your available uh, options here. So yeah, that's how you can you can listen to the lifecycle events, uh, and then finally there's the the lifecycle shutdown event. So again, as I mentioned your apps can be torn down uh, at any point during the interaction. It's, it's unlikely, right? We expect them to have a handful of interaction widgets running on a given interaction and possibly be bouncing between the two. Um, and then we expect them to be torn down. So we don't expect an eviction to happen during the normal course of an agent usage. But if it does happen, uh, we'd like you to be good stewards of you know, the, the platform, and implement a stop listener. And this is bits where you can, uh, when, when this stops, your app will actually be backgrounded and you'll have a period of time to tear down your resources. Unsubscribe from web sockets, uh, shut down. This is also a good time if you're looking to uh, track usage in a temporal manner, this is where you'll wanna do that. You'll wanna subscribe to this hook and then push an event. You can kind of start maybe a heart, a heartbeat on a bootstrap event and then maybe stop it in the stop teardown. Uh, this also prevents you if the agent actually just completely closes the browser, we will still try and dispatch that stop event for you, but we, we can't guarantee it because we can't intercept that event at a browser level. Uh, that's just something the browser vendors have rolled out. So we encourage you if you're looking to track usage to maybe do a heartbeat model, but then always try and clean up in the stop event. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, we really we have a couple examples that we're we're working to show this, and something that you can pull in and play with and modify the code. Um, and and there's a again the, the link to this is following the rest of the uh, the slides. But basically, it'll just walk you through the setup options that you need to do, how you create the OAuth client, how you can host this this locally, or you can you can point to the deployed version that's also hosted on GitHub I/O. So I'll I'll spare you the details of that, but you can. You can embed this, and this is what I'm going to have Jim demo here in a minute. But um, you can you can embed this and get an idea of it. Start to add the SDK, play with it, and get an idea. Uh, and again, you can also go out to the SDK, and we host the the toast message and the profile demos and and all of these others. I'll show you uh, that I have over here in the widget apps. All almost all of these are hosted out on the on the. Uh, GitHub SDK. So here's one that links to your profile or can link to a, a conversation detail. 
Um, and here's one that can link to an external contact. Uh, you've seen the toast example embedded inside of the, uh, let's see, where's the toast one? There's the toast. You've seen the toast embedded inside of the interaction. And again, that's the same, same, same app that's just running and it's just contextually applicable to the, the conversation. Uh, and we also have a premium client app example you can embed uh, that really shows that install process. Um, so I think with that, I will stop sharing. And I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to Jim, who will show you that demo. And then I think we'll, we can open it up for detailed questions. All right, Justin, thank you for that. Let me share my screen, everyone. All right, so what I'm going to be showing you is um, an application that my team wrote for um, our app foundry partners as a as a guide for how to use the in the new interaction widget location so interestingly enough this application used to be what we call a standalone app which means means it runs in an iframe but it used to run outside the scope of a conversation so it had to track what was the active conversation that the user was on so that it would have the context of that um, now we've converted it so that it runs in the new interaction widget location. So it automatically gets the conversation ID and knows what interaction it's tied to. Um, the application I'm going to show you is what we call chat agent assist. We wrote it for our partners who do AI, who um, listen to the chat conversation, try and determine intent, and then surface up um, answers that are uh, that the user could choose to respond with. They don't have to, it's not, they're not forced, but the AI gives some good answers uh, the user could respond with. Our example is hard coded, it's not linked to an AI, so it's meant for an AI vendor to, to hook into. But generally, it's a good example of an interaction widget. So let me start a chat conversation. I'm gonna use our developer tools out on developer.mypurecloud.com. Um, on the chat widget section. I'm gonna start a chat and I'll send that in. I am logged in already to Genesis Cloud and on queue, so I'm going to answer. And as Justin said, you've got the typical widgets that were always there for handling a conversation, scripts and contacts and the profile and interaction details and notes and, and all of those. Um, on our org, we've got we've got three little extra interaction widgets. Uh, the one I'm going to show you today is the agent assist interaction widget. You get to control the icons. They're monochrome, but you can you can uh, specify which icon to show for your application. So if I load up the agent interaction widget, um, hi customer, how can I help you today? So. My agent assistant is off to the side there listening uh, to the chat conversation and watching what comes through. I'm interested in one of your products, but it seems to be pretty expensive. So um, our example is coded to look for certain keywords in the messages that come through, kind of like analyzing intent like an AI engine would do except it's really basic. It just does a keyword check. And if it sees the word expensive, which it's gonna see in this, it comes back and it surfaces up. I could provide you a one-time discount and you'll see that that's a hyperlink. So um, our chat assistant is using the agent chat API to not only listen to inbound messages from the customer, but it can send outbound messages on behalf of the agent. So if the agent sees that response and likes that, they can simply click on that and it goes right into the chat and out to the customer. So it's kind of like using uh, canned responses. Okay, with canned responses, you could find a response to automatically uh, respond with and you could search for responses. In this case, it just happens to be providing uh, responses based on keywords so the agent doesn't have to type those. If I had multiple chats, um, I'm not going to do that right now because I'd have to have a couple of different uh, uh, windows open and launching different chats. But 
Each chat would be listed over here on the left, obviously, and you can switch between them. And as you do, the iframe for the agent chat assistant will be shown specific for the conversation it's linked to. So they are conversation specific. So you have actually three running instances of your hosted web app um, running. And as Justin said, you can have up to 10 uh, right now um, active before the lifecycle events start to come in and one, the, the least recently used app would be sent a shutdown event so that it can shut down, but it would be relaunched if you switched back to a chat and it had been offloaded, it will be reloaded. If you are interested in taking a look at this um, application, this agent chat assistant, it is actually what we call a blueprint. It's available in one of two locations. So if you have a Genesis uh, cloud account, which I assume most of you do, you can go to the App Foundry. So appfoundry.genesis.com, that's our marketplace for third-party integrations. And if you search for Blueprint, Blueprints are our new open source kind of applications that are out there. And we've got a couple. Uh, we, are, we are adding more. Um, and the chat assistant is right here. If you uh, look at that. You can say get it now. You select your region. It'll reload on me. Give me a second. It reloads to know what region you're in now. You click get it now. It gives you the pre-installation steps uh, that are required and it'll tell you the deployment steps. And if you click open link, it will take you out to GitHub. So here on our MyPureCloud repo on GitHub is the chat assistant blueprint. So this is the source code for the uh, chat assistant that uses the, the platform SDK that you can uh, bring in. And also on this is a guide, uh, view the full guide to the blueprint article. So if I open that in a new window, it actually takes you to the Genesis Cloud Developer Center and there's a walkthrough guide to tell you exactly how to get this thing deployed into your org, um, like what to create, how to create the OAuth client, how to update the, uh, the interaction widget, how to assign it to queues and such so that you can get it running. Blueprints are also available on the developer center itself. So if you go to the main landing page at developer.mypurecloud.com, in the resources section, there is now a blueprints section and you can look at the blueprints that are out there. So if you don't want to go through the App Foundry, you can get to them uh, from here as well. And uh, Justin, did you have any comments, anything you want me to show? Um, for the uh, no, I, I could offer to, if we want to show the lifecycle bit, I can I could offer to show how they'll they'll be cached and evicted and things in a, in a demo. Uh, stance, uh, if if that would be valuable to the audience, um, uh, you know, mul creating multiple and showing that they they focus in the DOM and they stay and they stay uh, backgrounded. But other than that, I don't think there's anything specific on these that okay. we need to show. Um, yeah, I think we could probably just just yeah, go I into some Q and A uh, if, if we wanted. I agree. All right, so so that's going to end the presentation part of our devcast. So. If you have any questions, please uh, post them now into the Q&A section at the bottom of the uh, Zoom webinar uh, screen. And Justin and I will answer those. We've already had a few come in, Justin and I answered those online. You all should be able to see those in the Q&A section on your, uh, on your webinar screen. But we do have one open one. It says, can a widget yes. set focus to itself programmatically? Uh, so yeah, the use case is, you know, you get an inbound interaction and you want that widget to be the one that has the focus right when they accept the interaction. This is a, a very, a very common, uh, question and a good, and a good one. Um, but it's kind of a cat basket. So, uh, right now the answer is no, you can't request programmatic access, um, behind the scenes. What we have is that attention count, uh, uh, attention count splat 
to notify the user that there is something to, to do. And the reason we do that is for user experience um, and, and that everybody, we, we don't know how we would arbitrate all of the various use cases and, and, and verticals you might add. Uh, so we haven't, we haven't given up on it, but we basically decided that we wanna show this splat and let the user then focus when it's, when it's available. There are also certain actions that we try and enforce in the SDK um, that, that encourage you, the user to be shown. So you can't do a lot of background work without the user. It's really intended to be a UX uh, feature. Um, what we do have coming, um, and I, I can't commit to a deadline, but what we're working on is the notion of a default tab that is going to be org configured. So when you saw when we configured the interaction widget, you'll be able to, to select uh, what queue this goes on and what media type. Well, we expect to be able to have like media type based filtering of what your default app is going to be. So if your users currently have external contacts, it's focusing that by default. And we're going to get rid of that or, or not get rid of that, but make that configurable. So if you've gone to the trouble to build an in-house app or you've purchased an App Foundry app that you want to use and you want that to be focused first, we'll add that so that that helps your user and reduces one less click. Um, and then we, we're not opposed to considering that. Maybe there is a switch that an, an org admin would have to opt into to allow you to programmatically focus. But, but we don't want to just have an unarbitrated constant barrage of refocusing, right? We don't want to get into a, a fighting match over uh, the agent's attention. We really want them to be able to drive that. Um, another unit of work we're actually working on as it relates to panels is what we call sticky panels. So when, today, when you switch between interactions, it tries to maintain focus of your app. Um, actually, I've got that turned on in my org. I can, I can share that. Um, that's a new feature that will help with this as well in that uh, the interaction will snap back into the state it was in. So here I have, I have a chat and I have an email. Um, and you can see maybe in the email, I'm loading up the profile, the external contact. And then when I switch over to the, my existing, oh, now I've got this uh, demo, over toasting. That's another good thing for, since we're on the topic of user experiences, don't over toast. These are examples to show you how the SDK works, but, but a toast is, is pretty aggressive uh, and invasive to the users, the agent's flow. So we recommend to not use toasts heavily. Uh, but anyway, the, the, what I wanted to get to was here, I've got a, uh, an interaction focus, the, the toast example. When I go to the, to the email, I snap back to where I was on the profile tab. And when I go back, you'll be right back to your, your toast interaction. And this is something we, we just needed to get and handle um, for just general uh, agent ergonomics. And this will, sort of help with that focus issue. So the agent will be, should be focused. Uh, and just to that, that feature, the snapback is not GA yet, right? That's something you guys are working on. Is that correct? That's correct. I, yeah, I, I want to make sure we, we focus that. We are, we are attempting to, to ship it uh, before the end of the year. Um, we should be close, but I can't, I can't promise that, but it, it's close um, and we're ready. We're getting close to shipping that one. Uh, will help with some of the focus bits. All right. Hey, our next question is from Pierrick. Hey, Pierrick, thanks for joining late your time. Hey, do we only support monochrome icons? And what if I set the, set it to a color icon? Yeah, that's a good question too. We actually, we actually support both. Um, I can launch one and show you. Uh, if I go to the integrations, um, and actually I'll show it, it works the same. I have a, I think I have the dev tools integration. Uh, let's see, my developer tools. This might be configured. Yeah, this is configured in statically. Uh, let me go to a different integration. I'll show you the setup and then I'll show you how it manifests. Uh, let's go to that toast interaction. And so this is in the advanced config where you can you configure the icons that you wanna use. Uh, and you can see there's two different types. There's an icon and a monochromatic icon. Uh, and it's actually uh, a good opportunity to show that, you know, obviously we prefer you use SVGs, they're scalable, they're themable, but you can also use, you know, bitmaps if you'd like. Uh, the monochromatic icon is used in uh, the, the tabs, the interaction widgets, as well as in, in this view. Um, and, and we do that to bit, really to just fit with our theming. So you don't constantly have to update your apps and your uh, and your iconography whenever we change themes. We try and insulate you from those changes. Uh, and so you can see here, they're, they're grayed out, but then when you focus them, we will 
we will uh, paint your icon with the color. And that's really the point of the monochromic icon. It should just be a single color. You can't have transparencies and bits. Now, if you have an app, you see I have two that, that actually can't. So uh, Skype for Business, Microsoft doesn't allow you to tweak their, their icons. So you can specify a vector icon or a, a bitmap in the icon section if your icon uh, can't be mutated for legal reasons. Um, but we do like to see the, you use the monochromatic one so you have a more integrated experience and it feels like a native part of pure cloud. But how that manifests itself is it will use the monochromatic here, but you do get the full color icon. Uh, when I hit dev tools, you'll see there's the full color, a flash of the full color Yeti logo. So when an app is bootstrapping part of the lifecycle event, we'll show that icon until it's ready. And then we can switch to the monochromatic icon. So we try and use those icons contextually. Hopefully that answered the question. All right. And Pierre, uh, just, just to add to that, um, I just discovered today that my team, when they developed the Agent Assist, they used uh, the Genesis Orange color uh, SVG. So Genesis Cloud must change it to monochrome or change it to grayscale at least. So um, if you do specify an SV SVG that's got color, it's going to be turned monochrome depending on where it lives in the UI. All right. Uh, right the, the, Mike, the, monoch the monochromic uh, icon is basically an opt-in that we're going to mutate your icon color. So that's exactly right, Jim. Yep. All right. So uh, Mike Korkara says, I hope I said that name right, has two questions. Um, is the widget already available? Yes, it is. It's when, GA when, Justin, like the beginning of this month, I think? Towards the beginning? Uh, yeah, on the it's spot. only a few I'm weeks not, old. Yes, yes, it's a couple <laughs> weeks old. It's a, it's a newborn. Yeah. Uh, yep. Sorry, I, and I don't have the actual date. That's all right. And uh, can we have the app installed both as a standalone and this new widget with the same installation? I would say yes. It probably will take some coding um, to for your app to be context aware of whether it's within the iframe for the interaction widget or whether it's in the widget panel that slides out of the left side or whether it runs standalone. But you could have one code base that is hosted in all three locations and uh, would be location aware and could even render a different UI depending on where it is, um, given the screen real estate it has. Um, I haven't actually built something like that, but it's theoretically it's possible. Yeah, you, you certainly could. Well, so there are a few bits. Uh, so there's the so in a traditional, the, the previous version of apps, the ad hoc ones, you've had the option to select standalone and widget. And we did create a new type for this because we have different configuration options. That's why we have the interaction widget type. Uh, we may eventually break these out into their own type if we find the need to add a supplemental configuration for those types. But, but I completely agree with Jim. Uh, it's all in the URL. Um, if you were to put a PC, um, PC conversation ID uh, URL interpolation in here, you would know if it doesn't have one, you would know it's not in an interaction widget context. That would be a way to, to use it. Or you could provide uh, a hint on the URL since you're in control of this. Um, that would probably be that if you're looking at that, it'd probably be best to look at one of these installation flows if you're thinking about a, a premium app where there's an administrative app that just helps you configure it. So under you can put it under the apps menu and just give it to it admins, and then they could specify. Um, uh, you could then actually create the apps programmatically, given the right if you, as long as your app has the right in, integrations um, access control in their uh, the roles, then they can actually create standalone widgets or interaction widgets and create instances of them. Uh, so that's a good avenue, and I believe the. Um, I believe out on my pure cloud, the, the demo app, uh, can I find it? Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, example, let me see if I can find it here. I'll have to find it. I'll, I can follow up on that. There's an example app that, uh, that, that shows how you can actually do an install process. Uh, okay. So sorry, right. I can't find it off the top of my head. 
So Ahmed has a question, and I think I can probably answer this one. It says, can you please give an overview on agent assist life cycle, especially on bootstrap with an exclamation point? I think I know where he's going there. I think it would be helpful on this particular example. So Ahmed, when uh, this was in beta, my team uh, got it early and, and was looking at it, and I built my own little sample just so I could be familiar with it. And I struggled with the bootstrap event. Uh, to be honest with you. Um, it was firing right when my app would load, um, which is what it should do. However, I was doing an implicit grant OAuth uh, a grant flow, and that reloads my frame because once it, it has to redirect to Genesis Cloud to do the authentication, and then it comes back and reloads my web app in the iframe. And by that time, I had lost the bootstrap event and had lost context that the bootstrap event had occurred. Um, so I actually reached out to Justin to ask him this answer. And he said, um, two, two options. You could store something in local storage, right? If you get the bootstrap event, you could store something for your app in local storage to, to indicate that you'd been bootstrapped already and not to, do, not to bootstrap again. Um, alternatively, you could just assume a bootstrap occurred by the time that your OAuth implicit grant is complete and you're back at your app. So, um, Justin, anything to add to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I remember that, that conversation, Jim. Uh, and, and yeah, the bootstrap, I mean, it, it's actually probably better for the restore uh, flow when, you were, when you've already authenticated. So we would recommend when you use the um, the, the, the SDK, the public S, the JavaScript public API SDK, it has that authorization or implicit grant bit and it in, and you can configure it to store in local storage your your access token, or uh, as Jim was mentioning, your your state. You can either store that uh, locally in maybe session storage or pass it through the, the query string to come back. Um, so that, that bootstrap works better in that situation where you, you've already authenticated and now you're just starting up and a good place to hang hang your work. Um, it's also a good hook to, to alert or to, to confirm that you're, you've completed your, uh, your setup work. Um, so actually the bootstrap event is what is, it says bootstrapping and that's what shows the icon I showed when, the, when the app is starting. Uh, and then once you confirm that you bootstrap, that's when it'll switch over. So it's a built-in loading screen, if you will, you don't have to use it either. Um, there's actually, uh, so if you don't opt into the bootstrap hook, the app is, is not gonna wait on you to say that you're ready and you can do your own loading thing uh, and your own loading spinner or whatever you wanna do. So, so there's actually no pressure to use the bootstrap event if you don't want to. So I've added that too. Right. Um, right. So if it helps, feel free. Okay, and the last one so far is uh, Christine Casada says, will this widget be used as a tool to point to the scheduling used for ad hoc messages, ad hoc meetings as well as holiday scheduling. Um, I'm, Christine, I'm guessing you're talking about like WFM scheduling and meetings and holidays and stuff like that. I would, I would say that is that if we offer that, that will be a built-in productized thing and won't, it will probably show up along that widget toolbar, but it probably won't be a public widget like you could create on your own, it'll be a built-in thing, I would imagine. But I don't know if that's even on the roadmap. Uh, interestingly enough, you could build your own though. We do have WFM APIs. You can query the schedule and query the holiday schedule. And you could create, you know, if you have a developer or you're a developer on staff, uh, you could create your own interaction widget today that uses that API to query that information and show it to the agent. So um, I hope that answered your question. Uh, let's see. Uh, she says, <laughs> I had this working before, but this does not, not work. So Christine, I would encourage you, um, go to developer.mypurecloud.com, scroll to the bottom of that page and go to the forum, click the forum link and post a question onto the forum. And we will, uh, we, we, we can kind of look into that and see what you're doing. Um, Cause it sounds like probably a deeper thing than something to answer on, uh, on the Q and A of this, this dev cast. 
All right, and Dave says, uh, where can we find documentation on the query string parameters and values that can be passed from Genesis Cloud into the interaction widget? I can't find the conversation ID parameter I think I saw in Justin's session. So um, if you go here, I can, actually, I'm not exactly sure where that's shown here. Oh, um, sorry, I, uh, I was muted. J Justin, uh, you're, in, you're in the, yeah, you're in the custom app. SDK section is is the interpolation stuff. Can you show where that's at? The I can. Uh, we actually missed the conversation ID in the documentation, and this was recently pointed out in a uh, in the the forum. So we actually need to add it. So um, so thanks for for picking up on that one. Uh, if you go into the client app section, so this is this is general config, and then you can get into the SDK, but but those URL interpolation parameters are documented here, but with the notable exception of PC conversation ID, which we are adding. I have recently added a ticket for that. So we'll, we'll fix that one uh, for sure. But that's where they are. Uh, this also gets into, there were, there were some other questions about advanced config. This is where, where that, the details of this event of these sh are shown, uh, the life cycle events, how the localization works. Um, so, so there's some advanced config docs out there as well. So that's, uh, if you can see again where I got to it, I went to uh, APIs, client apps, and then yeah, this is the this is the bit where all the general stuff will be, and then when you go into the SDK, uh, that's when you can actually see the, the the bits of the SDK. All right, and hey, we'll Mike. Get that added. Mike has a question. This is a good one. I hadn't thought about this. Does the widget appear also in a callback interaction? And I would even add to that like a preview outbound campaign interaction because I think they're similar. Yes, it does. We have callback is one of the media filter options. Uh, let me show that. So in the configuration, it lists the available media types and and call versus callback are different filter types, even though they appear in the same interaction. So I could configure one for a call and one for the callback interaction. So those are broken out. Um, similarly, we're breaking out the different types of messaging interactions. So you can see Line, Facebook, and Twitter are broken out versus just, uh, and uh, web messaging will be coming at some point uh, versus just having messages. So we're, we're trying to get you the fidelity you need to show, uh, show the interactions when you need to. So, an interesting point on that. That that does mean that you can have different interaction widgets for the different media types. So not only can they be context aware to the conversation, but you can have, you know, some widgets that are specifically used on calls and other widgets that are specifically used on chats, some on emails, etc. So uh, interaction media type specific functionality that will enhance your agent's uh, workflow. Right, and that's that's particularly good too. I mean, I guess the big distinction would be between voice and digital. Those would be big, big differentiators. Like, do you want to, do you have some sort of like real time transcription feature that's only applicable for voice, uh, versus are you doing something like Jim demoed with chats and and it's only applicable to chats or web messaging or a digital conversation where you want to get the payload of the the conversation. Um, so yeah, you can filter like that and. And if you do either, if you're configuring the ad hoc widgets or if you are uh, building a premium map, there's no reason you can't have multiple line items of the same uh, interaction widget just using a different URL, or maybe you've, you've got one that's filtered for chat and one that's filtered for voice and you hint in the URL of which type that is, you can do that as well. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility to this. It's a really exciting uh, location to host a third party application or develop your own. So we're really excited to have this feature. Justin, thank you. That ends the questions. I thank you for being our uh, guest today and showing us that new feature. And everyone, I would encourage you, if you're interested in using this and you run into any questions, visit the developer forum. <laughs> He's got the URL there at the top. Uh, that's the direct URL. If you don't remember that URL, just go to developer.mypurecloud.com, scroll to the bottom, and there is a link to the forum. Justin, you want to talk about the rest of these? Uh, no, I, I mean, well, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll run okay. through them. I, I mentioned that if you have an issue with the SDK, uh, again, you can be happy. Reach out on the forum. Um, 
if it's if you're having an issue with it, or if you know it's a bug, please post it on the issues uh, in the repo itself where we monitor those. Um, feature requests could go in the issues or the forum. That's happy. We have to work on through either of those avenues. Uh, here is is Zach Hinkle's, uh, or I'm sure you could also talk to Jim too about a. a setting up a premium application. You can contact me directly if you're having issues as well. Uh, and then I also have a bunch of URLs here. We'll make these slides available, I'm assuming, Jim, somehow. And so here are some of the links. Yep. But almost everything is accessible from developermarketcloud.com. So we've said that a lot. So feel free to hit there and, and check it out. Yep. So this, uh, this DevCast was recorded. It will be on our YouTube channel, along with the slides will be in the comments of the YouTube channel for you to preview offline or go back and look at and go through a little bit more slowly so that you can uh, see what we were doing and set it up in your own Genesis Cloud org. And with that, I will uh, sign off today. Thank you for joining and look for our next DevCast coming uh, around the 1st of uh, December. All right. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.